Um, so in this uh, workshop, I'm going to take you through the creating a basic CMS uh, tutorial, which is actually a tutorial on the CMF website, and you can you can do it at any time. Um, but we're going to run through it, and hopefully you'll learn some stuff. So. So my name is uh, Daniel Leach. I'm a, um, a senior developer at Massive Art. I've been a CMF core member since 2012. I've written the PHPR shell and the routing auto bundle. And I'm the principal and not the only author of um, creating a basic CMS tutorial. And this is my open source colleague, Willem. So what is a CMF? So the CMS is a loosely, um, a loose, loosely coupled set of bundles and uncoupled components um, concerned with building content management systems. So in the CMS, um, we have bundles for um, routing, which is probably the most important bundle in the CMF. Um, there's a media bundle, there's a routing also bundle. Um, an SEO bundle, blog bundle, create bundle. Create is for editing um, content um, with JavaScript on the, on, the, on the front end. And a menu bundle. Um, and for components, I think we've got the routing auto component and the routing component. Have we got any other components? I think that's probably it. But the, the aim is to have more components. Um, and we're not scared of using um, outside um, bundles as well in libraries, so the menu bundle uses KMP, uh, KMP menu, and soon that will use the second version of KMP menu, which um, should be, which was released not long ago, I think. Um, we use CreateJS, um, the, the front-end editing library. Um, we use the Sonata admin, um, and by consequence also the Sonata block bundle. And the, all, the, all the yellow bundles are the CMF bundles, and they have an optional dependence on the core bundle, which just kind of ties stuff together. OK, so PHPCR is a, a content repository API. Um, so it's basically just a set of interfaces um, that you implement, um, and it gives you um, a way of storing content in a hierarchical manner of querying content with um, SQL queries. Um, it gives you versioning. Um, it gives you workflow management. And quite a lot of other stuff. That's most of it. I think I probably missed some important things as well. But uh, it does an awful lot of stuff. Um, and anything can implement this API in PHP. Um, but the main implementer at the moment is Jackalope, and Jackalope is a um, kind of an abstraction. And the concrete instances of Jackalope are the Doctrine Deval implementation, which uses MySQL um, as a storage engine, and uh, the Jackrabbit um, implementation, which uses the Java Jackrabbit uh, content repository server, um, which is JCR. And if, in case you didn't know, PHPCR is based on JCR. Okay. Um, so PHPCR is the primary storage system for the CMF um, via the PHPCR ODM, which is a document manager like the uh, Doctrine ORM. Um, it stores content in a hierarchy like a file system. Yeah, and we've said that already. So. OK, so in this tutorial, we're going to be dealing with uh, the CMF routing. Um, so the CMF routing system um, differs from the standard routing in Symfony because every single endpoint in your system is stored in a database, um, which gives the application a certain knowledge about um, the endpoints that it has. Um, and routes reference content. And yeah, and all routes are stored in a tree when we use the PHPCR database, which means if you change, um, if you rename, a certain point in the tree, then that, that, um, that takes um, effect for all the routes below that point. Okay, and uh, in the CMF route, 
With the CMF routing, you've got two options. You can have a, a root document or root node, which represents both the root and the content. Or you can have um, content and roots. So you can have um, roots that reference content. You can have two separate trees, one with the content and one with the roots. And it's this uh, two-sided um, approach that we're going to use in this tutorial. Um, one advantage of this two-sided approach is that you can have roots. So you can have a, a French root, um, a koi, for example, and you can have a, a German root. I've forgotten what home page is in German, but whatever, you get the idea. So that's, that's home. And you can have two different languages which reference uh, the same content. So by having this two-sided structure, you can have multi-language um, roots. OK, but the, the problem with the multi-language roots and ha handling the two-sided uh, content structure is that you have to somehow generate the roots. Um, so this is anybody that's tried to implement this has implemented some form of um, auto-rooting, auto-root generation. Um, so we've, we've handled that by creating the auto-root bundle. Um, which basically you, you define a schema um, for a document of a certain class and every time you save or update that document it will generate a root or update a root. Um, this has the additional benefits that we can handle conflicts automatically so if there's an existing root um, with the same name it can uh, fix this conflict um, for example by adding an auto incrementing uh, number at the end. And we can also handle defunct roots. Now, defunct roots are roots which no longer have any use. So if we create a new, um, if we rename a content, then we've got two roots. We've got the old root and the new root. So we can handle this in two ways. We can either delete um, the old roots, or we can change it into a redirect for search engine optimization. Okay, yeah, so there's an example. We have a URL schema post date title. I'll explain that um, in greater detail later on. Um, we save the document and that will create the root posts 2014 0808 uh, my blog post. So that's routing auto. Okay, so any questions before we start the workshop? New? Okay. Um, so yeah, just before we start, so SSH or go into your virtual machine um, in whatever manner um, you choose. Um, CD to the to the to the CMF directory. Uh, reset the Git uh, repository. Fetch the origin. Check out one dash start and run init .sh, which will reinitialize. Um, the environment. I'm going to sit down. Okay, so how many people have got that far? Okay, a few. Two more minutes. Um, you'll find it beneficial to navigate in your browser to the to the tutorial on the CMF website, which I'll just find for you. Okay, so this is the tutorial. Um, if you could open that in your in your web browser, that would help um, you a lot. Okay, how are we getting on? How many people have um, initialized um, the first stage? Okay, how many people are still going? 
Yeah, you. Uh, does anyone need a hand? No? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, hold on. Uh, so those of you without the appliance, um, hold on. Yeah. So those of you without the appliance, you can. What's the best way to display this? Okay, so you can clone this repository. Okay, does anyone need a hand? Should we move on? Okay. So, So we'll start, um, so if you follow the tutorial and you go to getting started, and I'll just, hold on, where has everything gone? Okay, um, so if you navigate to the Getting Started page, um, what we'll do first, we can skip all the require and um, the composer configuration and we can progress um, directly to initializing the database. Um, so if you've already run the scripts, this should um, create the database. If not, you'll get a, a conflict. Okay, I need to run the init script. I also need to check out the start. I also need to check pull in origin. Okay. Um, so yeah, do a git fetch origin, git checkout one dash start, and you might need to do a git reset as well. In fact, you will need to do this. Um, by the way, can everyone read this? Is this too small? Okay, I'll try and make this a bit bigger. Okay, um, so if you do git reset hard and then um, git checkout um, one dash start and then uh, run init.sh and also just reset um, everything that needs to be reset. Okay, and now we can run this command. So if you copy this command, Uh, so it's app console, so this will create the database, as you've probably already done several times today. Um, the next command, um, app console doctrine php init debug. 
Um, we're using the Jackalope, Jackrabbit, um, sorry, the Jackalope Doctrine Deval implementation, so we need to initialize the schema um, for this implementation. Um, so if you, if you run this, um, and now if you were to look in your database, um, you'll see that it's created all these tables which store, um, and this, this is the, the storage for Dr. Diva. Um, so now we'll generate the bundle. So if you, again, if you copy um, this, it's nothing special. Uh, the web page is uh, yeah, um, it's symphony.com uh, doc master CMF tutorial um, and that should get you there. If not, you can Google uh, creating a basic CMS um, with the CMF and you'll you find it. Um, if not, you can navigate on the site. So if you go to uh, simply.com, uh, simply CMF, um, you should find it. So has everybody got the, uh, the tutorial in their browser? Yeah, some people nodding. Okay. Okay, so um, yeah, we generate the bundle. And then we can proceed to creating uh, the documents that we're going to use in our CMS. Um, so the first thing we we'll do is create a, a content trait, um, which I'll just copy. Um, so you can put this in your new, uh, newly generated uh, bundle. Um, and it would help if I was on the right project. Yep. So. Um, what you've just done is you've created a basic CMS bundle. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a document uh, folder to this bundle. In theory. Yep, so we'll add a document directory and we'll call this content trait dot PHP. So just paste um, the content trait into um, that new file. And so if you don't know what a trait is already, a trait is a way to kind of share um, code between two different classes or two or more different classes. Um, so in this trait, we're defining. Um, we had the annotations as you would in uh, the Doctrine RM, so we define an ID, um, a parent document, which is unique to the, to the PHPCR, um, the title, um, content, which is a string, um, and some other stuff too. Uh, now we're going to create the concrete, uh, the concrete um, implementation um, of a document. So we're going to create the, the page, which is going to use um, the content traits. So just create a new uh, document called page in the document folder. OK, and see all it does is use the content trait. And we can do the same for the post. So we can add a post document. And the post is pretty much the same as the page document, except we're adding a date. OK, so it's the content trait plus um, the date field. Um, and we use PHPCR, and we say um, before the document is persisted, check if there's a date. Um, if there isn't a date, we, we set the date so that the post has always got um, a date. OK, um, so the next concept we're going to move on to is the repository initializer. Um, so when you start uh, a new repository, um, it's, not like, um, it's not like a relational database where you've got table A, table C, uh, table B. Um, you have a tree. 
And so you want to put your post in a folder, CMS posts. Um, and initially, this, this folder, and I say folder in quotes, it's not really a folder, it's a node, but um, it's kind of analogous to a file system, so I'll call it folder. Um, so we need to create these nodes, these folders, um, before we can store any documents. Uh, so in the CMF, um, we use something called a repository initializer, um, which is a class which is um, executed um, when you load fixtures or explicitly if you call um, doctrine phpcr um, repository init. Um, that, that was command. Um, so the, the, the simplest way to do this is to create a new service um, with the generic initializer class. Um, and that accepts a list of, of paths um, which it should create. So if you copy um, from services up until services, and you can put this in your already existing um, services.xml file. So just paste that um, in. OK. And save it. So this will create um, in, our, in our repository CMS pages, CMS posts, and CMS routes. Um, we can verify this. Um, what's the password? UZSC. Um, we can verify this with the PHPR shell, um, which is PHPCR SH, um, which is zero, it's a profile. Um, yeah, you see, now the, the repository is empty. Um, now that you've added this service, um, we can call, um, we can run this command, which will initialize the repository. Some luck. Um, okay, maybe I need to follow and advice and create the database. Okay, I guess um, you probably have to do that as well. Um, well, I thought I did that at the beginning. Um, so anyway, now we can run the doctrine PHP cell repository in it. And you can see this is, is launching my custom initializer, and you know, it's no coincidence we call it my custom initializer here. We can change that of course. Um, now if I refresh the session in PHPCR, um, nothing happens. That's very strange. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm actually on my local machine and not on um, the VM, so that's okay. So you can also access um, certain, there, there are tools on the command line um, which allow you to um, introspect the, the database as well. Um, so there you can see that um, we have the root, the CMS, and the three uh, nodes created by the initializer. Um, the command is there if you need to run it. Okay, so now we need some, some data in our, in our repository, so we use uh, the Doctrine Data Features Library. Um, so there's nothing special here at all, so we'll just copy this. You need to put it, uh, put it in a Data Fixtures directory, um, and it should be called, the, and another folder in that directory should be called uh, PHPCR. Um, and you need to create a load, load page data uh, class. So paste um, the load pa page data um, class into that, and also load post data class. 
and the same. Okay, and now theoretically we can um, run the load fixtures command and it's not going to explode. Okay, uh, so we can now run the dump command again and you, you should see some more data. Uh, so we've got one page and four blog posts. Okay, so that, that concludes the first part of the tutorial. Um, we can move on to the second part. Um, that there is, there are, there are branches, um, so you can fast forward um, if you're if you're behind. But maybe we'll just wait a few uh, minutes for people to catch up. Um, so in this section, we're going to um, enable the CMF routing and configure the automatic routing. <coughs> um, so first of all, we need to register two bundles, um, the CMF routing bundle and the CMF auto routing bundle. So just add this to your app kernel. Um, at the end, this is a little bit too big. So add the two bundles. Um, then we're going to enable um, the dynamic router. Um, now in the CMF routing, um, we effectively add another router. Um, but we don't want to replace the default Symfony router because that's still useful. And obviously if we did remove that, that would break things like, um, like the debug um, stuff in Symfony and any other applications which use routing. So to solve that problem, um, we use something called the chain router, which is a service which replaces the main router, um, but accepts multiple routers. So every time you request um, a URL uh, to be generated, it will first um, try the Symfony dynamic router, which is the database. And if it's not found in that, it will fall back to the, to the default router. And the same happens when you, when you, when you request the page. Um, it will first try the Symfony uh, CMF router. And if that doesn't work, it will fall back. Uh, to the default router. Um, so all we're doing here is we're saying that um, the CMF dynamic router will have priority um, and the Symfony router um, doesn't. And we're enabling the dynamic router and we're saying that it should use PHPCR. You can also use the RM um, with the routing um, component or bundle. So you just need to copy this into your config.yaml. Okay, so just add that to the end. Um, we also need to enable the CMF auto routing bundle. Um, adding the bundle isn't enough. Um, so again, what? Okay, don't break the existing configuration. So again, we're saying that the CMF um, auto routing bundle should use uh, the PHPCR, which is the only thing the routing auto bundle supports at the moment. Um, in the future, it could support um, the RM2. OK, so now we're going to create the schema um, for the auto route. So like um, with the mapping in Doctrine, um, or the mapping with uh, validation, 
Um, we can do this either in YAML or XML, um, and we, we define um, the class uh, for which we want to generate the automatic route. We define the URI schema, um, and we define token providers. Now, the token providers um, provide values for tokens which we use in the URI schema. So the title here is the, um, the token, um, which corresponds to the token provider title, which uses um, a token provider of type content method, and it uses the method get title. So the content method token provider will use um, a method from the content to provide the value for the token. Um, so in this case, we use get title on the content. So if you've got a page and it's called home, um, then this URI will reach a page home. It will also automatically slugify um, the title. So you'll never get um, invalid URLs. Um, so the same for the post, um, except we use post date title. So we use different um, provider for the date. We use the, the content date time um, with the get date method. And you can also optionally supply a format method to change um, the formatting of the date. So, so yeah, that's in a nutshell, that's, that's the, uh, the auto routing that's the interface. So just copy that. Um, now the auto route, um, these, these files will be automatically included if they exist. Um, so in your basic CMS bundle, resources, config, um, add the file cmf routing, cmf underscore routing underscore auto dot yaml, and paste the contents of that example inside. So that's in basic CMS, resources, config, cmf routing auto. Um, now if we reload um, the fixtures, it should uh, generate the routes. So at the moment, you can see the routes, if this works, which is not at all certain. Yeah. So we've got pages, posts, routes, and the routes are empty. Now if we reload the fixtures with this new um, routing auto configuration. Yes. It didn't crash. It's good. Yeah, so you can see it's created the routes, um, post, and it's got the date, and it's slugified the titles of the post documents. Okay, so that is the end of that section. It was quite a quick one, I guess. Um, so we'll just wait a few minutes for people to catch up if they need to. Is everybody uh, ready to move on? Yeah? Okay. So if you need to, 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 to fast forward, um, you can check out three, um, routing and routing auto. Okay, and we'll move on to the next uh, chapter. So the CMF, um, by default, has um, integration with the Sonata admin bundle. Um, so we provide admin classes um, to work with um, Sonata with most of the, the bundles, so in the menu bundle, in the routing bundle, um, and possibly some other bundles too, I can't remember. Um, we also provide um, a tree browser for the, for the CMF, uh, for the Sonata admin bundle, which allows you to um, browse the content repository um, with a JavaScript uh, tree browser. So yeah, we provide some integration with the Sonata um, admin bundle. So 
So what we're going to do in this chapter is um, create an admin, admin interface for the pages and uh, the posts. So if we start off by copying these bundles into your app uh, kernel. There's quite a few bundles there. Um, I think all four of um, these bundles are integral to the Sonata admin bundle. Uh, the last one provides the, the integration with PHP um, with, uh, with the CMF. OK, and we need to configure. Um, Sonata blocks. I'm not entirely sure what that does. Okay, so this this will just um, display the the admin sections on the dashboard. So if we add this to um, our configuration, this is an app uh, config .yaml. So just add that to the end. Um, and then we we need to add the Sonata routes um, to your routing .yaml file. So again, in app, config, uh, routing.yaml. Just paste that in. OK, I need to install the assets. Otherwise, it's not going to look very pretty. Okay, so if that doesn't work with the symlink, uh, try it without the symlink. Okay, that's, um, if you don't know already, the um, Symfony provides a server run command, which is really, really useful um, for development. Um, in this case, we don't need it, because we've already got um, a virtual host, um, so we can skip that. But if you don't know about that, I'd encourage you to find out about it. It saves a lot of time. Um, and at this point, we can visit our backend um, interface. So if you go to uh, cmf.ezsc, uh, uh, admin dashboard, you should see um, the administration interface. OK. Now you see the translations aren't working. Um, this is because we need to enable the translations um, in, the, in the framework bundle. So we go to app config, config.yaml. And if you go to the top of your file, you should see a framework translator. And it's commented out, so we just need to uncomment that. And we should have translations. Yeah. So you see, we've already, we already have the roots um, and the redirect, redirect roots um, admin interfaces. These are actually automatically registered by, um, by the routing bundle. Um, but in fact, we don't want this because our CMS is too simple. So we don't want um, this extra stuff. So what we're going to do is we can disable this. Um, and you can do that just by using the use Sonata admin false uh, flag under CMF routing dynamic persistence PHPCR, which we already have. So so yeah, under the CMF routing dynamic persistence PHPCR, so just add um, use Sonata admin false. Um, and that should, yeah, so now you should have nothing. You should, yeah, because we're going to add um, admin classes for the pages and the posts. Okay, so let's create the admin classes. 
so. Yeah, I won't explain too much about the Renata um, admin bundle. But um, so under source Acme basic uh, CMS, just add the admin folder and add a class called page admin. And paste um, the class in. Um, so if you don't know Sonata, um, basically in this class you define how um, the the page admin is represented in the in, in the back office. So with lists, with the forms, um, and also this is quite important too. So because. Because uh, PHPCR is hierarchical, when we save a new page or a new post, um, it needs a parent. So this can't really happen by magic, so um, we need a pre-persist method in, in, in the admin. Um, yeah, and here we, we retrieve the known um, node that we created earlier in the initializer, and this is the parent node of the new page, so the pre-persist um, method just sets the parent um, document when we persist a new document. Okay, and now we do the same uh, for the post. And for the post, we're going to be a bit more simple. Um, we're just going to extend the page um, class. So create post admin.php and paste the post class in now. And so all we're doing now is we're extending the page admin um, because the two classes are effectively, um, or at least they're very, very similar to each other. And in the post admin, we're just adding the date um, field uh, to the form. OK, and that's, uh, that's not all we need to do. We also need to register the services um, for the admin classes. So now that we've created the admin classes, we need to register the services. So if you just copy um, the service definitions. And you can see they, they define various uh, things. So they define which group um, the admin, um, admin interfaces should appear in on the dashboard um, and the label that they should have. Um, so just paste those into um, you, the basic CMS bundle uh, services.xml with your other services within the services tag. That's really annoying. Okay. Okay, now if you look Again, we have pages and blog posts. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, this is true, actually. So I'm confused. I'm actually in the Samba um, chair in my local box. And this is the Shamba's chair. Okay. Um, so I need, I guess, uh, to do this in... Yeah. Okay. I think having... A BM and a local machine is confusing. Um. Okay, I'll start from scratch. Okay, um, so now my version is working, which is good. Okay, so if you're behind, um, you can check out um, four uh, Sonata Admin. <coughs> uh, does anyone need any help? Is everyone good? Okay. Um, so now we're just going to uh, create the controllers that we need to handle the content and, and the templates. And we're going to tell the CMF uh, routing uh, system how to route the content to the controllers. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, modify our content tray. And this is quite an interesting mapping. Um, so you might have seen earlier when you added the trait that you added a routes property. Um, we didn't um, add a mapping for it. Um, now that we've actually added the routing bundle, um, we're going to add the PHPCR referrers um, annotation or mapping. And so effectively, any, any document within the content repository that references um, um, the annotated instance, so any, if, you have this, if this is the post and these are the root, this is the root property, any document which references uh, the post, you can retrieve um, using the referrers. So you can re retrieve every single uh, document type, which every sing single document instance which re refers to um, a post or anything else using the referrers. And in this case, um, we're, we're being explicit and we're saying, uh, give me all the referrers um, which are of type root. So this property will hold um, all the roots which point to um, 
either the page or the post or whatever implements the, uh, the content tray. So just add that to your, to your content tray. Okay, now th this is um, this is quite an important concept. So the dynamic router it won't really do anything unless you tell it to do something. Um, so in this case, we need to tell it um, that all classes of um, of type page should be routed um, to the default controller. So it does this when when you access um, a route, when you access a URL. Um, with, the, with the dynamic router. Um, it will retrieve the, the root uh, from the content repository and the root will have a reference to the content. So it will have a reference to the, the page uh, class or the, page, the instance of the page object. Um, and here we're saying every time you encounter the page class you need to root it to the default controller. So if we add that to the application configuration. So app config config.yaml. Uh, yeah, so you don't need to add it to the end of this file, you need to add it within um, the existing CMF routing uh, configuration. So just add it under the dynamic. Um, key at the same level or the level below dynamic sorry okay now we need to create um, an action to handle this um, so when you generated the bundle you, you by default the generator generates a default controller so we're just going to reuse that um, be sure also to copy the template annotation because we're going to use um, the Sensio, what's it called? The Sensio Extra Framework Sensio. Extra Bundle. Yeah. Um, so this just saves a bit of time. So just add this to your default controller. Okay, so as, as I said before, we've already mapped um, the page uh, class to this controller. Um, so when this, this, this action is called, it's going to receive a content document. And this content document is going to be the page. Um, so just for fun, um, we also retrieve all the posts. Um, there's no reason to do that. Um, it's just for fun. Okay, so we just to create a simple uh, template as well. Um, so within views default, just create a post for html.twig and paste uh, that template inside. Um, so in theory, if you now go to page uh, home, it's going to explode. So I need to run my cons uh, my server.
Okay, so we've got a nice uh, error message, which should be quite easy to debug. So I called my file host, I should have called it page. Okay. Um, so there is us. Um, that is, in a way, a complete CMS. Um, there's there is a final section, um, which we can do. I didn't expect to get quite this far. Um, so if we just, um, how how far along is everybody? Um, is everybody up to date? Do people need more time? Okay, so we'll just wait um, five minutes before we proceed. So if you're stuck, and I think most people are okay. Um, Um, you can check out five uh, controllers and templates. And we'll move on uh, to the next section. Uh, okay. Um, so in this section, we're going to create a menu. I'm using the CMF menu bundle and the, the KMP uh, menu bundle. So if you copy the second two, of uh, the bundles here. Um, in fact, we've already registered the first one, that's a bug in the tutorial. Um, so just a second to add them to your app kernel. Okay. Um, now, like I said, we're using the KMP Um, menu system. Um, so we need to modify our, our page document and we need to implement the node interface um, from the KMD menu uh, component. Um, and we need to implement the methods um, in that interface. So effectively, the, the page is going to be a menu node. Okay, so we're going to mix. Um, when, you, when you do a CMS, when you write a CMS, you, you can have um, the roots, the content, and the menu separately, or you can have everything in one document. Or in this case, um, we're having the, root, the menu and the content in one document and the roots separately. So you can sort of mix things up. Okay, so, so we need to add the node in space uh, to our page class. Yeah, you don't want to add it there. That would that, be wrong. So you need to add it there. Um, okay, and then we need to use um, this interface. So just add um, the node interface to the implement line. Okay. Um, we need to add uh, the children mapping. And so in PHP CRDM, when you add the children mapping, um, this property will contain all the children of uh, this document. Okay, so just add that and the rest as well. Okay, so we have children. Um, Get name, get options. Um, so the options array is, is for KMP menu. Um, so it's, it's, yeah. So the label of the menu item will be this title. Uh, the content is an object. Um, it's this um, attributes applies to the HTML, I think. Um, and yeah, display children. Okay. So I'll save that. 
Okay, now we're going to, at the moment we've only got one page um, in our fixtures, we need to modify this. Um, and because when we render um, a menu um, with the camping menu bundle, we need to, to render a roots node. So when we, we render the menu, we need to render main. And then the, the menu, um, the camping menu component will render the children of main. Okay? So we need to add a parent called main, and then we add the children, home, and about um, to the main document. So we're just going to refactor our fixtures. Um, so delete in, in the load page data uh, class, delete what's already there, and replace it um, with this stuff. Okay, so load uh, page data. So remove um, this stuff. Actually, don't remove all of it. Leave, leave parent and delete everything else. This is another bug in the tutorial. Okay, so we're creating a new page called home um, with the parent is CMS uh, pages. Um, and to the main document, we're adding the about page and the home page. Uh, so if we reload the fixtures, Okay, so now we've got pages, main, and then home and about. Uh, so when we render the menu, um, this is the node that we're going to uh, render. Okay, um, so the menu provider. Um, so the menu provider is a service um, which will provide. Um, the, the main menu node to um, the, the, the Canby menu system um, so that we can render it. So effectively, um, in the end, we're going to type Canby menu and twig main. And so the, so the menu provider will accept this and it will return um, the main page or menu node. So we need to register this, register this service um, again in the basic CMS bundle uh, services that is now. And we can just have a look at what that service does. Um, so it's effectively saying that all the menus in the CMS are going to be served from CMS pages. Okay, so we've seen already that this is going to be um, our, our menu main is going to be CMS pages main. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. We also need to enable um, the Twig extension in the in the, the KMT menu bundle. So this is in your configuration again. The app config config on Yammer. So just uh, camping menu twig uh, true. And we can just add this uh, to our template. So open your page template. Um, and you can put it anywhere you want to. Um, so we've got KMP menu render main. And if we refresh our home page.
Yeah, so that renders home and about, and you can click on them, and you can change the page. Okay, and that's, that's, um, that's pretty much it. Um, there is another section in the tutorial, but it's quite a long one. Um, and it's not that great, in my opinion, so uh, we, we can skip that. Um, but already, I think um, you've got all the, the basic elements of um, a CMS there. Um, I've, I've used this same tutorial to create my web page. Um, in fact, I use this tutorial quite often every time I want to start a new project because when you create new projects, you often have to go through the same process of debugging and finding out things that you need to put in places. Um, it takes a lot of time, so one of the reasons we created this tutorial was to provide a, kind of a, a bootstrapping or manual bootstrapping process so you can follow it and you can, within, I mean, I, I can do this in about half an hour, I think, the entire tutorial, so. Um, and if you didn't have the tutorial, it would take you two or three hours. Um, so it's really quite a useful thing to have. Um, yeah, and it's, it's the basis for my, my web page. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, has anybody got any questions? Um, I actually don't know. I know Drupal uses the router component. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else knows it. Um, I want to ask you if you know what status of this integration on the GNR and it's published. No, I mean, yeah, there's been no talk no, in the community about it. Talk about it. No, not that we know. No. But is, is EZ considering the use of the same app? Does anyone know? Uh, well, I, uh, in my opinion, the opinion does. As far as I know, the EZ was intended to use on JBrowser like six months ago or something like that. Yeah. So I'm not really sure if it's why I asked it. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, it's funny that the chain router is probably the most useful, or one of the most useful components <laughs> in the same app. Um, and it's really things like this that we should be making into components which people can, can reuse, you know. Um, and yeah, any, anything possible as well. So if people are interested in using parts of the CMF, um, they just need to get on the mailing list or um, on GitHub uh, and tell us about it. Okay, so um, thank you. And,